so we've talked about the, the sensation aspect of uh, pain. We've talked about the thoughts. And I think there's an important part that you write about, which is there's these common emotions that we can experience when we have chronic pain. Some of them may be things like grief and loss. Maybe you're having pain and there's loss of functioning that, that goes with that pain um, in terms of loss of abilities in your body. Um, there's resentment that can happen with pain, uh, anger. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to talk more about sort of the emotions that come with pain and, and how you work with those with people. Gosh, there's, there's a lot to say because, of course, emotions will come up. And I think, first of all, it's just important to remember emotions are there to give us information. And like we're often afraid of emotions because we have, I think as a culture, we're afraid of emotions. And to a point where like, so I'm German and in, uh, in Germany, stoicism was like really, really popular, still is. Like it's, it's also popular here, but I think in particular um, when I grew up and, and I was very into that as a teenager. And the thing is what I didn't understand then, but I understand now is that in stoicism, they really vilify all emotions. And I think it is because emotions can lead to behavior that is destructive, that is harmful, that is making it worse. And so we are thinking the emotions are the bad guys in a way, while it is actually the behavior, not the emotion. The emotions give us information and we have not learned how to be aware of them, to hold emotions and to kind of harvest that information, which is really important. And then to let, and it comes like if the word emotion has the word motion in it, and it actually, the function is it moves through. And that is what we are often uh, have forgotten or never really experienced because it feels like that is always there. Or when I go into that particular emotion, it will overwhelm me or I will drown in it. So to learn like skills, how we can kind of do that in a safe way can, and I've seen that many times over, really be life-changing. And sometimes our emotions, especially emotions around pain, the ones that we don't like, like um, resentment or grief, the flip side of them is what we care most about. So we're grieving something because it's something that we that we really care about that maybe we've lost. I worked with a, a client um, who really, really loved to hike. It was like one of his favorite things is to yeah. go, yeah. Um, especially during the fall colors and go and hike in, in um, the East Coast. He'd travel there and go for hikes. And he, he lost a lot of functioning in his knees and his ability to hike. And there was so much grief there. Mm. And when we got to underneath what the values were around like being in nature and, mm. and being at peace in nature, we were actually able to take that grief so that he could go and be in nature. You know, mm. instead of hiking, he'd go and bring his picnic and sit and have lunch with the colors. And some, what often happens, I think, is that the emotion shows up and just like the pain, we do the same thing with our emotion that we do with yeah. our physical pain, which yeah. is we put it in the closet. We never actually really go into it and take yes. a look around. And another aspect of that is that oftentimes I think emotions that come with physical pain are discounted or people are concerned that if they have emotions around their pain, they're going to have this, I learned this term medical gaslighting, <laughs> you know, that they're going to be told that all of their pain is just psychological. Yeah. And and then that lends to this whole kind of um, feeling of being discounted in, yeah. in your pain. Yeah. So how do you work with that? Because it, there is a psychological aspect to pain, but we don't want to discount people's experience. I was just I actually had a discussion about that last night with a colleague is so, like, how can we kind of convey this? Actually, the fact that all pain is made up in your head. Um, and then people, right, because so many people have heard, so they, they, they really suffer, they struggle, they're in a lot of pain and they go to the doctors and they make all these tests and then they hear like, oh, we can't find anything. And therefore it must be in your head. And that is so painful in itself and so dismissive. 
And so what we're trying to do as pain educators is to say like, haha, surprise, all pain is in your head. Like coming back to where we started our discussion from, we need a brain to make an interpretation of the information that comes in from the periphery. And to see again, like that chronic pain is overprotective. And that is actually, and because, right, so we said we, we already touched on that, that pain or chronic pain is actually a, a bio, psycho, social, spiritual experience. And we're not separate. We're not just a body. And we're not just a psychological being. We're not just a spiritual being. Like we're all of that. And what we see is really how these different areas really influence that. So when you ask people, well, does make stress the pain worse? You have periods where you're very happy, where the pain doesn't show up. Like, look at all the factors that is actually influencing your pain. And it's not, right? So we're a whole being. And the good news about that actually is we can work on all these areas and see, so how is sleep, for example, affecting my pain levels? How is the quality of my relationships affecting my pain levels or the flare-ups? And not to do that in a way that it is blaming, right? So like, what's wrong with me? But to say like, of course, of course, we are like connected. We need connections in all these areas of our lives and to really include all these areas as, as we are healing and really coming back to this really important principle of like, we are whole and nothing can take that away. And the uh, social component of pain is, a, is an interesting one as well that you also alluded to there in terms of relationships that, you know, when we are um, experiencing, I think there was a classic study where they had people go into an MRI and they would um, flash a little X before they would shock the person's toes. Mm -hmm. And they'd look at the MRI of their brain in terms of the anticipation of pain and the pain mm -hmm. areas that light mm -hmm. up. And they would either go into the MRI and do it alone or go into it and hold somebody's mm -hmm. hand, yeah. the nurse's yes. hand, yeah, or yeah. go into it, hold their partner's hand. I think this yes. was Sue Johnson that did the study because she was also looking at holding your partner's hand and then also holding the hand of like your ex, yeah. <laughs> a conflictual partner. <laughs> yeah. And and how your brain responds to anticipation yes. of pain differently yes. oh, yeah. just in the presence of another. And then in the presence of someone who is compassionate and caring and you have this positive relationship with. Yes. We all know that as, you know, as parents, yes. right? Yes. Like yeah. our child's pain, they experience pain differently when we're holding them when they're not, obviously, yes. right? Yeah. But that makes such a big, again, a big difference. And it's not to say that your pain isn't real. It's to say it's all influenced by... Yes so many more contextual factors than yeah. um, just a traditional medical model would yeah. see it as. And I think what you're speaking to is so the, the factor of connection is really such a core piece. And so the compassion and then so like like what I'm teaching or like what's really important is that it's not just mindfulness or mindfulness is really helpful, and but we also need compassion and we need self-compassion, which is really, really hard. So I'm teaching a class for a chronic pain right now and people really struggle with like being kind to themselves. And for people who have been like in chronic pain for sometimes decades, there's really this is like, I hate my body. There's something wrong with me. It's like, why can't I get this together? I mean, there's so much. And then you think like, so again, what's the hen? What's the egg? What was there? So what has influenced um, this whole like where they are today? But where we are today is like, it's so hard to be kind to yourself. And but it's so, it is often really the medicine that we need, just what you're saying. So feeling like when you're, you're not alone in what you're experiencing with the MRI study that you just quoted, it's so important that you feel like, okay, I'm not here by myself. And we know that isolation is like one of the core um, kind of features of chronic pain. For the reason that, A, it takes a lot of time and effort to take care of yourself when you're in chronic pain, all the doctor's appointments, all the things you need to do just to get through the day. And 
then and then of course you're tired which can often not remedied by good night's sleep where people say oh you should sleep more it's like people say yeah thank you that's <laughs> i didn't think of that it's like people often can't sleep or they're just tired and so they're not they might not go out with friends as much because they're tired or they're they need to go to bed early and so like so this whole cascade and then of course this like the function really as we said like the the attention is so collapsed around the pain that we really feel alone and isolated and often we don't know people in our direct environment that have the same pain so that confounds that but the truth is there are always people who know that and so that is part of the self-compassion exercise that we kind of in our mind really kind of calling in our tribe of people who really understand from the inside what that feels like to have that pain and then to also really start to coming back to like where the topic of like connecting with your own body to be able that, that is a connection if i feel into my toes i'm connecting with my body and if the body has always felt like kind of an enemy or weird or strange or there's something wrong of course i don't want to connect with that and yet that is really the medicine of just really pausing for a moment and saying like this is a really hard moment right now this is really really hard because so often like we're using the tools of mindfulness of course as a way to get rid of the pain and that is like this paradox that shows up in mindfulness is like where we are asked to turn towards what we don't want to turn towards to and the goal isn't to get rid of it and the goal is not to get rid of it and that is so hard to understand of course we want to get rid of this and so just want to when people go like wait what <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm learning this. I want to do yeah. this in order to get rid of the pain. So we have this really nice saying that we say, so mindfulness practice, the fastest way to get from A to B is to be fully at A. And that's, so there's a paradox in that. So that when we're actually able to say, like, coming back to what we said earlier, it's like, can I allow this to be here right now? Then things can start to change. And we have to do that over and over to learn to trust that. And really like this, the self-compassion is saying like, it's, it's, it's hard. It's really, really hard. What we're doing is so crucial as a part of that. Beautiful. Well, I am wondering as you're talking, if you would be willing to share with us and I can put it in a bonus episode, a meditation, mm. because a lot of what you teach is through actually just the embodiment of these practices and if you would guide us through a little mini like 10 minute meditation that I could share as a bonus episode coming up on this podcast because I think that we have to try it on yeah and we can talk about it but it's yeah. actually the doing of it that helps yeah. you um just get the experience from the inside out of what we're talking about yeah would you be willing to share one I'd be very yeah. happy okay. to do that yeah okay yeah great wonderful yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Christiane. Your book is called Outsmart Your Pain, Mindfulness and Self-Compassion to Help You Leave Chronic Pain Behind. And you're also a teacher at a number of different places. Why don't you share with us if folks want to learn more from you, where they can find you? So um, I'm based in Los Angeles, and we have an organization here called Inside LA, where you're also teaching Diana, which is wonderful. And so I teach like classes there, but the best for folks if they want to learn more is to go to my website. So my schedule is there. And one thing, so if people are really curious about like really learning about this approach to work with chronic pain, I have in a uh, pre-recorded um, class, a six-week class on chronic pain, which people can also find on my website. Thank you. Yeah. Someday we'll meet up in Santa Barbara Foothills and we'll go for a run together. Oh, absolutely. I'll do, I'll do the first like yeah. of a run. There is like there's a really infamous uh, trail run in Santa Barbara called Nine Trails. Yeah. That's like one of the hardest trail races that we have in in California. So okay. no, I'm not ready for that one, but uh, <laughs> but I I do I run um, I run a, a, a mountain called uh, Gibraltar. It's up by my house, and, and oh. it's a nice 
Aww. it's a nice run uphill and then you yeah. then you find a friend to come pick you at the top so you don't have yeah. to <laughs> run down it <laughs> but we'll, we'll find a we'll find a way to run together Wonderful. someday yeah. and um you can teach me about pain yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay thank you so much Christiana. thank you so much